Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on over here. This. Okay, what game are we starting? Well, that is up to us together as a decision. First things first, we're going to put up the last game we played. But I'm going to use this stream as a test stream. We're just testing what games can I play against you in chat. So, we're going to test that out today so first things first I'm gonna put up this game these miniatures were way too small I definitely did not like that but $47 hard to beat that price so little hard to complain on that front. Hey, Joe. Appreciate the contest. Want to say thanks for the hard work. Electric Jelly. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're just hanging out today. If you want to stick around, we're going to play a board game. I'm going to try to get, get people to play the board game with me from their house. Like, how do you play a board game from across the country? Well, we're going to find out. Now, obviously, some games are easier to play than others like that, right? You obviously couldn't play a game with hidden information. Can't play a game with hidden information. So that definitely actually limits us quite a bit on what we can play, I think. Um, but all is not lost. Goes here. Items. You gotta sort the items by number. That's annoying. Uh, where's everybody? Everybody went home. Just me today. Angry Joe, you're the best. You always make my day. Let's go. They got together earlier for table time. Thank you. Yeah. Help, uh, take care of people as they come in here. Uh, let them know. Douse. Oh, it's just us. Just us right now. We're going to play against each other. We're going to play against chat. <laughs> One, two, three, eighteen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Okay, I got it. Twenty-one. Oh, shit. This is... What a nightmare putting this back up. Right? Twenty-one. Uh, 21 here. Uh, the Viking Leaf, thank you for subscribing. 14 months, sir. 46. Card 46 goes here. Card 38. My bad vision, too. This is pissing me off even more. Card 21. 
because the the thing is these cards go in order so when you when you play the game you you just sort through them so we have a lot of cards to sort 11 let's break this into two decks that'll make it easier 11 there's 11 8 there's 8 14 fuck there's 14 sorry I know that's annoying <sighs> let's just listen to the music can you hear the music at a good level it's a good music 17 Or do I need to turn the music up? 19. Cool. So just join. What are we playing? I'm not sure yet. I've placed one game on the table that we can play. Potentially. But I'm going to go look at my other game collection. So one game we could possibly play together is Talisman. Because I don't think that game has too much hidden information. So it would kind of be easy for us to play together because I can't know what you have now one other way I could play with chat is having a facilitator right you would you would have somebody here like my girlfriend or something and she would basically act as your circuit right so she could look at all the cards but I don't know if that works because she would have to talk to y'all about stuff and I would be listening so I don't think that works either but it would be helpful anyway as just a um, as like a ringleader to wrangle y'all together and get everybody on the same page that's quite a responsibility to wrangle chat I don't know many people can handle that job I mean mods mods are good at it but like Dr. Evil 44 right here 20 20 right here 11 11 right here 17 17 right here 14 56. Everything has to be so small so that as I can't see it. 9. 13. 12. 20. This is nice music, isn't it? Only got two cards left. 63. And 34. Done. Okay. I don't know what's going on. It's like everything in my life is more difficult. Hey, Arch and Sting, what's up, man? What's up, man? Will these cards fit? Ah, oh, fuck. I won't. We're gonna need to divide off some of the cards. Put some more right here. And we're right there. Alright. Oh, now these tiny miniatures are a pain in the fucking ass. You fucking ass. Okay, we'll put all these beats. Okay, beads away. Beads away. Are these slots for the gold to coins? I, I kind of think so. Can they all fit? Kind of. This kind of works.
Okay. Experience tokens. Yeah. Right here. These damn square things. I never once to use these. I don't know about those. Oh, that's where the map tiles go. Uh-oh. Turn that around. All right, look at this. How the fuck are we supposed to know where things go? Luckily, I took a picture. The bishop is right here. I think Joe's n nun is right there. Pointy guy is here. Mitten! Mitten! Chumley, 35 months. Thank you, Chumley. We're hanging out. There's a shield guy here. Uh, this is ridiculous. This guy popped out of place. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. No, this is... Is there a dude with a stick? Is there a, a lady? A lady with a stick or something? No. I fucking hate this. Seriously, fuck this. Uh, this is the worst miniatures ever. I, I have seriously. You know what? I'm gonna just jam them. Let's just jam them in here. Fuck it. Jamming them in now. With no care in the world for where they go. Just. Just jam them in. I have lost all patience. Okay. They're so small that they'll fit into the individual holes just fine. I mean, they might rattle around and fly all around. But I want to get to talking to y'all and figuring out this next game. So... And this, I don't want to organize this yet. Or should I organize it right now? I don't want to organize this. Now. Organize later. Done. Let me say thank you to Dr. Legend and Hey Veg. What's up? Okay, games that we can play together. Actually, I think Destinies is actually a game that we can play together pretty easily because the app controls everything, right? Um, I would just put your consoles in front of me. You would tell me what to upgrade and what not to upgrade. So Destinies is one. But since I've played it two days in a row now, I don't want to play it a third day in a row, a third time in a row. So, but I will put this in the list of games that we can definitely play uh, together. Now, Commencing attack. Talisman we will crush the is a good one. Fedez, what's up? Thank you for resubscribing 49 months. 
So I, this is a UK exclusive. You can't even buy this in the US. I had to have it imported from the UK. That I think we can play together. I don't think there's any private information or we can attempt to. Um, we can also play Blood Bowl. Um, so let me get the games. Let me walk around my house. I'm going to find the games and I'm going to slowly put them here one at a time. And then we're going to pick together what game we can play. Okay. So let me bring some games over here. I'm also going to grab something to bring, drink downstairs. So as people are coming in, you can let them know uh, what we're doing. Okay. Okay.
Okay, these are the games I found that we can play together that I think would work. Um, Talisman Star Wars, game I've never played, I'm excited to play. Blood Bowl, I think, is very easy for us to understand. And then you can just tell me who you want to move. God tier. It's like a miniatures game on a hex grid, so it's easy. Zombie side, honestly, I'm kind of sick of zombie side. I don't even know why I backed the second edition. I even backed the Marvel zombies, zombie side. Uh, and then there's this detective game where you guys solve a murder and we can like talk to talk to suspects, but I think this is way too elaborate, I think, because look, each person has a little piece of paper. That's that. You know, that that's that's gonna be too involved. Okay, I tell you what. Let me make uh, an executive decision. We're not gonna play that one. That one looks too difficult. I don't feel like playing zombie side. God tier, I've already played a few times with my girlfriend two days, two or three days ago, so I'm kind of tired of it, but this could work. So we'll set this aside over here. I just realized Destinies has these things that will help. This helps store the game, so I'm gonna put these on. Okay. So, uh, Talisman, Blood Bowl, or God Tear. God Tear. I think we could do. If, if we play, so this is a two player game, and chat would act as one person. Talisman is like a what? Let's just say four to five, two to six. So multiple people in chat can maybe play. Uh, two player games may be a lot easier to play. Then there's Talisman. Let me, let me, let me see. <laughs> let me look at the Talisman since this is one I haven't played yet. Um, so you get encounter cards, a deck of 102 encounters. A long time, so, and then four skills. And then like, you would just, I would roll the dice for your movement, right? And then you would just encounter things, right? And so I'm just rolling the dice for you. And then battle, battling between the two characters. Let me, okay, let's see what the board looks like. Would it be easy for you, that, oh, fuck. <laughs> no. Okay, let this one maybe, you know, if there's multiples, me, Joe, Alex, Ray, and chat. Could play Talisman. Talisman Star Wars. Who made this game? Warhammer, officially licensed product, Disney, and Lucasfilm. There's three companies that you don't normally see together. Warhammer and Disney. That's just unique. Different. All right. I'm thinking...
I'm thinking we do Blood Bowl. I am thinking we do Blood Bowl. I already have the teams built. Let's see. Let's just try it. Let's see if we can do Blood Bowl. I, I, don't, I know you don't know how to play. And that's perfectly fine because all it truly is is rolling a dice. That's all it is. Unfortunately, we cannot use these green dice, so these are out. But what's cool about playing a game against you is that I don't have to worry about that side of the, uh, the board over there. I can just set it up for us so we can go this way. Now, there are reference sheets, but you don't need a reference sheet. Because I'm your reference sheet. Let's let's see if me and chat can play Blood Bowl together. Shall we? Okay. The two dugouts over here. Let's get the field. Get one set of dice. Okay. So, the question now will be, how do we facilitate? Okay, we're going to test this out. Um, now is the exciting part. You get to choose what team you want to play as. Let me go bring my teams. Okay, I have got, oh, here's another good set of dice, black. Um, I got humans, chaos, chaos dwarves, snotlings, human nobility, or human nobility, lizardmen, corn, Blood for the blood god. Lizardmen. Skaven. Hmm. <laughs> Just to make it easy, I am going to have Chad play Blood for the blood god 
And I will play the Lizardman. There. <laughs> Choice is made. Welcome sports fans, fantasy blood sport fans. It is Angry Joe's Lizardman. I need to come up with a better name. And chats, corn berserkers. We need to come up with a better name. Okay. This will be corn tracker. This will be lizardman tracker. Huh, huh. The ball's over here. Okay. So I forgot the setup. But let's just do a, a standard setup. So if we're doing the standard setup, forgot what that is. Hold on, let me get the rule book. Okay, I can't fucking remember. There's no picture in the, in the rules. Both teams uh, fully within the area of their own end zone. Each team can set a maximum of two players in each wide zone. Minimum three players along the centered field. Okay, that, that's easy. So you're going to want these big, powerful guys up front. I'm going to set them up. Like so. I'm going to set mine up like so. I'm going to put one guy there, one guy there, one guy there. This guy stays out. And I think one of these guys stays.
Okay, that's gonna be my setup. Your setup. I'm gonna get some of these. Uh, this. I'm going to put two there. Crocknor. In here. It just really depends on whether you're kicking or receiving the ball, actually. I forgot about that. All right, well, let's figure that out now. Set up. Start with the kicking team. Both coaches set up their teams. Uh, a player on the kicking team kicks the ball. No, we have to determine something else first. The weather, the fans. All right, let me get the cards, which will help us. All right, lineman, corn gore, blood seeker. You guys will be the red dice, and I will be the black dice. Okay. All right, the fans. Uh, well, first we need to figure out uh, how much money your team is. Okay. So you have one, two, three, four blood seekers, and they're 110,000 each. So you've already spent 440,000, 440, 440, thousand of your one million so now you need 560 560,000 points left well you're gonna have two corn gores those are 70 so 140 what did I say five, six, four, five. Fuck. <laughs> let's start over 440 560 minus 120. Okay, you have 420 left, chat. Uh, and each lineman is worth 50,000. How many linemen do you have? One, two, three, four, five linemen. Five times five, 250,000. You've got 170,000 points left. Honey, you got real 70,000. 
Um, All right, in the corn rules, let's see. Rerolls are 180,000? You know what, Jet? I'm going to let you cheat by 10,000 points. I'm going to give you one reroll, and now we are good. So you've got one reroll. What the fuck? And uh, let me calculate my points real quick. So obviously when I'm playing against Chad, I want a, I want a nice camera set up. So uh, after I set up these team points, I'm going to make sure if I can get the cameras real nice for this kind of stuff. Okay, so I've got six Saurus blockers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times 85. That's uh, 510,000. So I have 490,000 points left. Um, and I've got one, two, three, four, five skinks. Five skinks at 60,000 a piece. That's 300,000 minus uh, 490, right? Or 190? No, because I have chameleon skinks. So 140,000 in chameleon skinks. Sixty times three. One eighty plus one forty. Thirty. One hundred and seventy thousand points left. Did I do that right? Fuck. How many uh, points do you get for an exhibition match? Uh, team rosters. <laughs> when drafting your team for league play, you have a budget of one million. I guess we could just use a budget of one million. So I have 170,000 points left. Friendship. And each team roll is 70,000. So uh, I'm going to have two re-rolls. So I have two re-rolls and y'all have one re-roll. Okay. Friendship. Got the points <laughs> roughly equal. Let's just call it roughly equal. All right. All right. You're supposed to get some, I don't know, match inducements or some bonuses. And uh, on a certain char chart, we're going to ignore that for now because I can't. I mean, we just want to see if we can get this working and how hard it's going to be. So. Friendship. Huh, why did that go back to single 
gifts. One, two, three, four, five, six, six gifted subs. Thank you very much. An anonymous gifter. See, inducements. Yeah, that's what it is. Inducements. So, one team can have lower CTV. The amount of petty cash is equal to the difference in CTV between the teams. And then for every difference in CTV, you may roll once on the player's nuffle table. The nuffle table. So, you know, then we roll on this, this chart for our difference in CTV, but we're going to say we're roughly equivalent here, okay? So, set up. We did that. Kicking player. Wait. How do we determine? Setting up the game. Both, let's see, both coaches place their teams on the pitch and their markers on the dugout. Uh, both coaches roll a D3 and add their dedicated fans. Then we do a weather, roll a D6. Five. Perfect conditions. Oh, wait, there's two D6. Seven, perfect conditions. Neither too cold nor too hot. A warm, dry, and slightly overcast day provides perfect conditions for Blood Bowl. Determine the kicking team. Every game of Blood Bowl starts with a coin toss to determine which team will be the kicking team and which team will be the receiving team. Okay. All right, chat, call it in the air. I'm going to use one of your corn. Uh, this is going to be heads, and this is going to be tails. Heads or tails. Okay. Ready? The BB is heads, the other side is tails. Call it in the air. Ready, go. Three votes for heads, so I'm going to lock in heads. And it was heads. Congratulations. You are the, what is it, kicking team? If you win that, are you the kicking team? Let's go back. The German kicking team. Okay, I guess we'll just let you choose. So uh, in this instance, uh, three things will lock in the decision. Do you want to receive or kick since you won the coin toss? Receive, receive, lots of votes for receive. So you have locked in receive, okay. Okay, so you are receiving, and I will kick. Nominate kicking player. Okay, since you're receiving, you, you're probably going to want to set up slightly differently. See, that's the problem. Fuck. In, in, 
if chat was playing, if I was playing a real person, they would, you know, pick exactly where they want their miniatures. And it's just, it's difficult to do in this way. So... So what, what about we do like that? Um, now, if, if I was no, to nominate somebody in chat uh, to actually play, that, so that's another way to do this, is we invite one person in chat to be the actual player versus all of chat. Do I have any moderators in chat right now? Or are we unmodded right now? I think we're unmodded. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just do an aggregation, and we're gonna do three people, three uh, three votes, and you'll do it. So I set up your guys, and well, obviously you're gonna want to put a guy here and here. And you don't want to let me have an advantage here, so you're going to put a guy here. Hmm. There is decisions to be made, because a lot of the game of Blood Bowl is won on positioning. This is, it's difficult. It's, but this is good. This is why we're doing this, so that we can figure out how difficult it would be. Okay. Uh... So let's just say we both agree on our placement and we are good. Good. Fine. Uh, nominate uh, a kicking player. The kicking player cannot be on the line of scrimmage. The kicking player cannot be in either wide zone. Um, this motherfucker is the kicker. Uh, place the kick. A good kick can help the defense and hinder the offense. So I'm going to do something clever, which uh, I'm like, I don't know why more people don't do this. I am going to... Well, let's say since I'm, I'm trying to figure out which team sets up first. It's been a while. The kicking team sets up first, followed by the receiving team. So I would have set up first. I think I'm going to overload the right side. I'm going to overload the right side like this because I have a plan. Now, you're going to see, and that's unfair, because when you set up your force, you're seeing that I'm doing something with my skinks here. I can only have two players in the end zone. So then you would try to maybe, maybe counter. So I'm going to take this one guy, and I'm going to put him here in order to try to counter whatever cleverness I'm trying to do over here, right? Now, if you were an actual player, you would set up exactly where you would want, and we wouldn't have that issue. Because what I'm actually going to try to do, and this may be stupid, actually, but we'll see, is I'm going to try to kick it to where I can get the ball. So I'm going to put, I'm going to kick it, and it says, uh, um, place the kick. The coach of the kicking team places the ball in any square they wish. Occupied or unoccupied in the receiving team's half of the pitch. So as long as it's this half and over. So as long as it's this half and over, why don't I choose right here? Because what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to see if the kick will deviate on my side and I pick up the ball. See what I'm doing? So a D8. So the kick deviates. The coach of the kicking team rolls a D8 and a D6. So in order for my plan to work, I need you to roll. I need to roll a four, five, seven. I need to roll a four or a six, rather. Four, six, seven. And I'll tell you what, I'll place it here. So four, six, or seven. 
I rolled a fucking seven and one space. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking dirty. <gasps> Guess where it just went, guys? <laughs> so this is the space right here. Seven, one. The ball literally slams into my guy. Question is, I mean, it couldn't have gone any better than that. Question is, does my guy get an opportunity to catch it? I, like, literally kicked it to myself. <laughs> That's literally where the ball landed. Now, the kick deviates. The ball itself is still high on the air. Um, and we have to roll on a kickoff event table. So I got incredibly lucky. We don't know what happens yet. He may not be, have an opportunity to catch it. So 2d6 on the kickoff. Let's see what happens. Six. Cheering fans. Both coaches roll a d6 and add the number of cheerleaders on their team draft list. The coach with the highest total may immediately roll once on the prayers to nuffle table. Okay. Well, neither of us have cheerleaders. I'm black, you're red. Let's see who wins. We both scored six. We got a re-roll. So our fans are both going crazy. You got a five, I got a six. My fans went crazier than yours. I get to roll on the nuffle table. That's a 1d16. Seven. Was it seven? Greasy cleats. Ran randomly select one opposition player that is available to play during this drive. That player has their boots tampered with. Until the end of this drive, their movement is reduced by one. I'm going to reduce this guy's movement by one. So we're going to need um, markers to signify, you know, who has been fucked with. So that's a good I idea for me to try to remember in the future. Let's say this guy has that little marker. I don't know what it was. It was either a one or a seven. All right, anyways, we're just gonna go with a seven. We're just testing things out. So, uh, the ball lands right on my fucking guy. Ha ha ha. You suck, but what happens? Once the kickoff event has been uh, resolved, the ball will come back down and be caught by a player or to land on the ground as described by page 25. A kickoff must land safely in the receiving team's half of the pitch. Ah, that's where the game takes into account my sneakiness. I'm trying to break the game. A kickoff must land safely in the receiving team's half of the pitch. If the ball deviates or bounces off the path or crosses the line of scrimmage, as it did right here, into the kicking team's half of the pitch for any reason, a touchback is caused. Interesting. When a touchback is caused after the kick event has been resolved as normal, the coach of the receiving team gives possession of the ball to one of their players. No agility test is required. So that's bad for me because what could happen is you could just fail on the you know receiving the ball so bomber all right so you can give it to any of your players you can give this ball to any of your players who are you going to give it to <laughs> see how hard this is okay i'll tell you what um if I limit your choices, maybe that will help you play. Let's let's start using what we call the labeling system. Do you want to give it to player one, two, or three? Player one, two, or three? Player one, two, or three? Vote for player one, two, or three. Chat has voted three five times i'm gonna lock that in so player three automatically gets the ball he doesn't even have to roll 
Okay. That worked S somewhat. So there's the player with the ball back there. Okay, so now <laughs> in the process of Blood Bowl, you start activating each one of your players. Now, the order that you activate your players is important because if you fuck it up and you fall over, then it's a turnover and it's my turn to act. So let's say you chose one of these players to act. You chose one of these players to act on the front line. Then you could end up turning the ball over and your ball carrier never got a chance to move. So you don't want that. So uh, here's your ball carrier who has the ball. He has a movement of six, a strength of three, an agility of three, a passing ability of four, and an armor value of eight. His skills and traits is frenzy. So he can move six spaces. So... Uh, where do you want him to go? Chat. Oh, fuck. See, this is hard, too, because it's like you have choices. He can go up the middle. He can go to the right. Or he can go to the left. So three choices, right, middle, or left. I got one for right, two for left. That would be right, and this is left. Three votes for left. I'm going to lock in left. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm assuming you want him to move his entire movement value, right? Again, another. Man, it's hard to fucking. All right. Maybe Blood Bowl is not the greatest game to play with chat aggregate. But we could potentially play with one person controlling. Wait, that's that's a weird left. Oh, I went I went the wrong left. <laughs> one, two, okay, it was over here. So you said left. Here we go. I'm gonna go left. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. <laughs> you didn't even notice. All right. So, um, now what you want to do is you want to try to get your, your guys to form a defensive shield around that dude. So, I think it would be a wise... Eye. So, that guy is now activated. He's done. So, I'm going to put a token by him. Yeah, this is too hard. I don't think this is working right. Um... Because it's like the order of everything. But it's good that I'm playing this out because I get to see what is it actually like. So I would recommend that this 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 particular guy do, do something. This guy come up and jam. This guy blitz. This guy com, come up and help. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm assuming you want this guy to come and help. Nah, see, this is not going to work because every minute little decision like that that goes into playing Blood Bowl is, is going to be too, too difficult to do. So what we might need to do is nominate a coach on your side. But let's keep going in this method as, as long as we can. Um, so I'm going to say that this guy here, one, two... He is now in the tackle zone of this guy, so we leave him here because we're not going to blitz with him. You would rather blitz with this guy because the corn gores are better blitzers because they have horns and juggernaut, both of which help when they blitz. So this guy is going to blitz this guy. One, two, and then slam into him for uh, a block. Uh... So what does that do? Well, it increases your strength. Your strength goes all the way up to like a three. No, it goes up to a four. 
My skink is only strength two. So strength four versus two, you're rolling three dice and you're selecting the best result. So the results we rolled for you are knock them down, knock them down, or push them aside. We would obviously knock them down. Boom. You did it. So now, because he's knocked down, when somebody gets knocked down, you roll for their armor. Skinks have shitty armor. Uh, eight plus. So you, if you roll eight or higher, you're going to hurt him. Hey, you hurt him. He's hurt. No, how dare you, chat? You guys are powerful. <laughs> you guys are pissed. So uh, then we have to go to an injury table uh, and roll on the injury table. Whenever a player's armor is broken, an injury roll is made against them. 2d6. Oh, no. Nine. That is a KO. Nine KO. The player is immediately removed from play and placed in the knocked out box of their team dugout. At the end of uh, each drive, there's a chance he will come back. So it's not that bad. You didn't kill him. You didn't create a casualty. But I do lose one player. And you don't want to lose players. Because now I'm playing at a disadvantage. And you've set up a nice little running lane here, right? Got a nice little running lane that you're setting up. All right, so that guy is gone. So we've got these four guys that went. Now it's time for this guy to block this guy. That's a Bloodseeker at strength four versus my Lizardman at strength four. So when the strength is even, you're literally rolling a single die and you have to accept the result. Let's see what happens. Fuck! Good on you. Oh, and this guy has to move up. Uh, where that skink was. So it is a knockdown. So you successfully knocked him down. But see, look at another. Here's another problem is when you knock down somebody, you're immediately choosing uh, the direction of the knockdown. You either push him into this space, which is occupied by this lizardman, or you choose this place, or this space, or this space. I'm going to assume that you guys want to choose this space because it's further, uh, oh, furthest away. So I'm going to knock him down right there. Your guys have frenzy, which means you always have to follow up. You have no choice, even if it causes him to trip. So he follows up, and you're going to try to break my armor. The armor of these guys are 10. Oops, that's the wrong dice. So you have, they're going to have to roll 10 or more to hurt one of my main guys. I do not want you to hurt a main guy. Okay, he's safe. Okay. That's pretty good for you guys. Uh, let's get this one to uh, block this one. Again, it's even, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's uh, bring the camera up here. So this guy on that one guy. God Damn, y'all are going fucking crazy. So he just goes forward and knocks that guy down. My guy's safe. Now, here's the problem with corn. Corn is very good. They're aggressive, but the problem is they're too aggressive. So after you knocked me down, Normal humans would have the option of just staying in this space. But corn have to move up. Um, and unfortunately, because you're already in this guy's uh, tackle zone, when you actually move up here, which you're forced to do, you have to make an agi agility test to see if you can actually move up or a turnover happens. So the that's the drawback of the aggressiveness of corn. So his agility is a four plus on a D6. And why is he having to do that? Because of frenzy. So you have to get a four plus on a D6. Otherwise you fall down and play goes to my side. You 
lucky fucking bastards. How dare you? Okay, now this guy versus my um, my uh, lizard man. But you know what? He's weaker. He's a strength three versus a strength four. So you don't want to do that yet because that's likely going to uh, go against you. So let's do instead this guy versus this guy. And that's one on one. Oops. Up. Oh, you fall down. Now, you have one team reroll. So you can choose to reroll this. I would recommend not rerolling it because you want to save that because you only get one reroll per half. And you've got a lot more important things going on down here, trying to score a touchdown, trying to run down this lane. So don't use the reroll. Instead, accept the bad result. So that was right here. This guy falls down. I roll against his armor. The armor of a blood seeker is 10. Three, y'all are safe. Okay, so your turn immediately ends. Now we can we can go ahead and clear these markers. Now it's my turn. <sighs> All right, so uh, th these things have turn markers up here. So I'm gonna see you're you're on turn one. Now I'm gonna move up to turn one. So we're both on turn one. I'm on my turn one. Now I have to uh, figure out how to stop this guy with the ball. My big boys have fallen down. I could do a Hail Mary, try to run this guy over here and slam into you, but that won't work because there's all these gross and nice tackle zones right here. Fuck. Mm. All right, so I'm going to stand this guy up, and that will be his turn. And I will, thank you, G007 man, evening all. Hope all is well, all is well, thank you. I'm going to, you guys are gonna win already, I can already tell, this is, this is bullshit. Um, I have to create some kind of chaos over here. So I am going to place this guy here, which is going to give a plus one to blocking him because I'm going to stand him up and I'm going to take a blitz. Blitz means you can move and block. So he's going to blitz this guy with a plus one from his friend. So what does that do? My strength verse a four versus your strength of four. Normally it would only be one dice. But because I'm adding a plus one, because it's 2v1, and this guy is not in this guy's tackle zone, so he's not tying him up, he can add a plus one here. So what that does is it gives me uh, an extra dice. So this guy blitzing this guy for two dice. I'm going to try to knock him down. The skull result is bad for me. It means I am knocked down. So I don't want to do the skull result. I'll do the stumble. If the target of the block action has and chooses the dodge skill, this becomes a pushback. Otherwise, it's a pow, which is the best result I can get. Uh, luckily, uh, blood seekers do not have dodge, so that's a pow. So I get to knock him back in here, here, or here. I'm going to knock him back here. And I'm going to choose to not follow up. Because if I did, me moving that guy would trigger this guy to do an agility test. So I'm going to leave him here. Oh, man. All right. So I better get some help over here. Uh, these skinks can move at seven or eight, I think. One, two, three, four, five, a six, a seven. 
Uh, they move at eight. Eight. Try to tie him up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wish I could do another blitz right here from this guy to this guy, but you can only get one blitz per turn. I'm going to move this guy up one into his tackle zone. But that's the first time he's entering the tackle zone, so he doesn't need to roll anything. And this one, on this one, we're going to go ahead and start uh, going down the line. Let's see if I can open up a hole somewhere else in your line. So this Saurus versus this Saurus. Now, this is going to be bad for you because... I am contributing one to a bonus two to this guy from this guy. So that's a strength four, five, six. Strength six versus four. I roll two dice and choose the result. Uh, we both get knocked down, or I push you back. I'm going to push you back. This guy, I will push back to here. I can choose to follow up. I will not. So, oh wait, that was coming from that guy. So he has to push him back here because he has to go directly back. This, uh, this guy is uh, blitzing that guy with a plus one from him. So that's a five plus one is six versus strength of Three. So when I double your strength like that, no, no, four plus one is five. So it's not, I'm not doubling your strength. So I roll two dice and I choose the result. There's one of those. Do you have dodge on a lineman? A lineman does not have dodge. It, instead, he has frenzy. So you get powed by that guy. So I'm going to choose to knock him down here. And I will follow up since there's nobody there that can uh, challenge me. Now, his armor on a lineman like that is eight. Let's see if I can hurt him. Seven. I unfortunately do not hurt him. So one-on-one -on -one here. I roll a single dice and accept the result. It's a pushback. I'm going to push you back this way and follow up. One on one here. Pow! You're down. Yay, it's working well for me. Boom. That was a lineman with an armor of eight. Let's see if I can break your armor. Hey, ten. Your armor is broken. I fucked that dude up. Let's see if he's hurt. Uh, five on the KO on the injury table is stunned. The player becomes stunned as described on page 28 and is laid face down on the pitch. So he's not even knocked out. We just lay him face down, which means next turn, all you can do is lay him face up. I will follow up. All right. And now all I do, all I have is one player left. This guy. And uh, I guess I'll use him to tie up your your corn guy over there. I won't I won't blitz. So now I can remove all of these. These are just visual aids to let me know who has gone. So that is my turn. Now it's back to you guys. Okay. So now that we have completed one successful turn in this. We can uh, evaluate what's, how this is working. What do you guys think? I'm not going to give you my opinion until a few of you say yours. So, well, no, I guess I'll talk too. I don't know. It feels like I'm playing for you 
until there are major decisions to be made. You know what I mean? Um, this guy has the ball. So you are doing well. You're actually doing well because, like, these are these guys are easy to knock down. So you should be able to just knock those guys down and come around and hit up. Hmm. Uh, but this is a huge problem here. Look at this. These are my best guys, and I just knocked your entire midfield down. They're going to come screaming at you. You're, you're in big fucking trouble right there. So the best thing that you can do on your turn is immediately stand up all three of these people, like right away, because that will establish the line again. You see how it works? This guy would flip over face up so he can contribute. So going into turn two, let's look at the, let's uh, look at the marker here, turn two. Okay, so I am. I think it's a good idea to stand these up. I don't think you have any objections to that. the The problem is, it's it's that's their turn, unless you want to blitz with one of them. It might be a good idea to blitz with this one because he's not contributing anything, just standing right here. What do you think? How about this? You stand this motherfucker up and you blitz right here. So, uh, major choice. Do you come over here and blitz these guys? Which, you're going to blitz right into the middle of a lot of them, so it's going to be hard. Or do you blitz this weak-ass guy and start to open up this side? So, blitz the skink or blitz the lizardman? All right, one vote for week. Two votes for week. You can't vote twice, Venom. Joseph, three votes for week. All right, you're going this way. So that's going to be three dice because his is a strength of four uh, and his is a uh, strength of two. So you're doubling it. So you choose three dice and choose the result. Oh, not a good roll. Not a good roll at all. You're either both down, so you're not going to choose that, or you just push him. So you'll have to just push him. And you can either push him into this space or this space. We're trying to get him away from your runner with the ball, so I'd say right here. So push right here, and your guy follows up because he has frenzy. Okay. Um, you've got a blood seeker right here, one on one. This is a good situation. Um, this is a very weak line of mine, so I would say move this guy up. Right? He can't blitz. You already blitzed once. But he can block. And if he's going to block, you're going to want... Well, it's already strength four versus toughness two. I can bring this guy up for support. But that's actually not going to add any additional dice. So maybe that's not, that's not going to be helpful. So let's just go here. Four versus strength two. So you double, you roll three dice. Now, uh, bad roll again. You get a push result twice, or you can knock him down um, if, he, if he doesn't have dodge. Unfortunately, he does have dodge. So um, when he has dodge, I think it gets turned into a pushback result. Yeah, it becomes a pushback. So you rolled pushback three times. So we'll push him back here. 
And this guy doesn't have Frenzy. The Corn Gore. So what that means is that you actually don't have to uh, do the stupid thing and follow up. Because if you were to follow up, you would be moving. This guy has a tackle zone in this space. You'd be moving here and you'd have to make an agility roll. So let's just let's just hold right there, right? And then what that did is that leaves a small opening. That leaves a small opening here. So we can go, how fast do these guys go? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. That's a nice little block. What I'm doing for y'all is I'm, I'm creating a little path for your guy to run. Does that sound good? So this guy has six spaces he can run. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're off to the races. Now, here's a choice. Here's your goal right here. Now, every player in the game can do what's called uh, rushing. What rushing is, is you can go up to two additional squares, but there's a risk in doing it. If you roll a one, then you fall down. So, do you want to push two squares? Now, Think about this logically. So let's say he moves at six, right? So this turn, one, if let's say next turn, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So it would take you two turns to get there. If you went one, two, and you made it all the way, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six. So it actually doesn't help you get there any faster. So I want to know, do you want to push it or not push it? Vote push it or not push it. One vote for push it. Two votes for push it. One vote for not push it. And there's a third vote for push it. So you're going to push it once. And if you roll a one, you drop the ball, you fumble. Oh, 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 you so lucky. Okay. Do you want to push it again? You have one more push ability. So vote either push it again or don't push it again. Push it, push it. Push it. That's three votes for push it. Here we go. You pushed it and succeeded. So you managed to rush and get two extra spaces of movement. All right. Um, I don't know. Now I'm liking it. Now I'm working it. Now, yeah, technically I'm playing for you, but I'm giving you the major decisions or at least some of the major decisions. Now, sometimes I may actually, because of my inexperience with a team, I may be giving you suboptimal decisions. Uh, so you might have to eventually sometimes speak up uh, and say, no, we don't want to do that or whatever. But, it, but, I mean, that's the best way that I can see about going about this, right? So now that we've done everything we can down here, let's start looking at continuing to uh, break the line over here. So here we can go one-on-one. -on -one. Oof, both down. Do you want to re-roll? This ends your turn. Do you want to re-roll? Uh, you only have one re-roll this half. One vote for no, re-roll. Two votes for no, three votes for no. Okay, so you'll accept the result. We are both down. So you'll roll for my armor, and I will roll for your armor. We both have armor of 10. We are both safe. Nobody's hurt. Those two guys are fine. All right, so the, thus ends your turn. That was turn two, yes? Yes. 
Now I go to turn two on the uh, marker. Okay, this is working. I have a major problem. Wee-oo, 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 shit. Chat is about to score a touchdown on the left side of the field if I don't do anything over here and if I don't do it quick. Um. Oh, you're fucked, chat. You want to know why? This lizardman is free. In fact, so I'm going to stand this guy up. That'll suck his turn. But this guy is free. And I think he's in range to blitz you and you are fucked because these guys are, are these are my best guys so it's like one two three four five blitz mm, yep you're so you're so gonna lose the ball so see i may have played suboptimally for you you know what i mean because maybe a more cautious player i mean i know you're corn but maybe a more cautious player wouldn't have left him vulnerable to the middle of the field like that. Maybe you would have put him here, and in this case, I would put my, my, my lizardman here, and you would still have one turn to potentially deal with it. But I think this is part of the process of learning, right? And chat did choose to push it. I don't, I don't remember where you were. Were you here? You were here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right. So I want to get as many of my guys over there as possible. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not blitzing because I'm going to blitz with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Blitz. I got two motherfucking lizardmen over there. You're so screwed. Because this is a four versus a three. He's now a plus one, so a five versus a three. It's still just two dice, though. I'm going to knock that ball right out of your hand. Uh-oh. Both down. Fuck! I have two re-rolls. I'm using one of my re-roll. I'm using one of my two re-rolls this half. Fuck you, chat. Pow! He's down. Knock that ball out. We're going to put the uh, scatter dice right here. It's five. Five is this way. It actually goes into the crowd. Boop. So in the crowd, we have to fucking make a roll of some kind. It's a, I think when it's in the crowd, it does a corner. That's the corner scatter. And it's, what is that, a D6? But how many spaces does it go? Uh, Throw-ins. So... Uh, position the throw-in template. Roll a d6. When the ball is thrown in by the crowd, it travels two d6 squares. My God, the crowd throw this throws this shit far. All right, so one that determines the direction. So it's going to go 
off in that direction. We're going to start with this space, this diagonal here, 2D6. <gasps> God damn, six spaces that way. So if it landed here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, the ball lands there. And the uh, corn gore has an armor of nine plus. I'm gonna see if I can break it. Six, he's safe. All right, now I probably shouldn't have locked up all of my skinks since they kind of suck once they are uh, locked up like that to run back and get the ball. Because now I'm seeing problems. I'm seeing you might be able to get guys, you know, over there so this is this is worrying and this is fun this is this is good um, the the good thing about my guys though is they have a lot of agility so I'm going to actually leave now what that does is that causes this guy to hit him as he leaves um, and unless I'm able to roll on my agility. Now, what's the agility of a skink? Very high. It is a three plus on a D6. So if I can get a three plus, he leaves safely. If I roll one, two, a one or a two, it's an immediate turnover and y'all can go grab that ball. You ready? Six, woohoo, I'm out. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These guys can move eight, by the way. He's gonna attempt to pick up the ball. That's agility again, at a three plus. He does pick up the ball, and he's got one space of movement left. I'm gonna go one, and you know what? I'm gonna push it. One more. I'm going to push it again. Yeah. One more. Let's go. Fuck this. Let's go. All right. Let's try to knock these fools down. I'm going to uh, block with this guy to this. Let's see. This guy to this guy. He has a plus one, so he's rolling two dice and choosing one of the results. Oh! No! I was gonna open a nice little hole here by knocking this asshole down, but he says, no, fuck you. You are knocked down. Your guy uh, knocks my fool down. Fuck. I think I actually get knocked down in my current space. All right, and then you roll uh, a 10 to break my armor. Seven, I'm fine, fuck. All right, it's a turnover. So that's it. <clears throat> now, chat, it is your third turn of eight turns to try to get the ball in the end zone. What would you like to do? Let's, uh, now that we're in the third turn of the game, I'm gonna start to take some of the training wheels off. I'm just gonna ask you what you wanna do and I'm just gonna look at chat. I know it's difficult, I mean, cause you might have to write out a whole fucking strategy. So you've got some guys on the ground. This stunned guy is face down. Can you kill the solo lizard? Yes. What you would want to do is try to get as many people there to help as possible. So first things first, I think you should probably stand up some guys. So, because these two, these two lizards are free if you don't stand this guy up. So you stand that guy up. Their agility is very poor, 
So if they ever tried to leave, they would probably fail. So you definitely want to stand that guy up. You want to stand this guy up because he is very powerful. Never want your blood seekers on the ground. And he ties up this this uh, this this guy. Now, here is where all the business is going to happen. Because what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to break through and knock that guy down. How do you do that? Well, here's a good situation. You got two on one over here. So maybe this guy can block this guy. Normally, it's a three versus a four, so you wouldn't want to do it. But plus one from him, it's a four versus a four. So you're rolling a single dice. And if you can get the knockdown right here off a single dice, you're freeing this guy up to come crashing and slam into that guy. That's, that's really what you want. Um, another way you can do it, First, let's take the stunned guy. Let's flip the stunned guy face up. That's the best he can do. That's his entire turn. Um, another thing you can do is this Bloodseeker versus this one. It's a four versus a four, so it's a single dice. Um, your Korngor actually has good agility. Three plus, he could actually leave and go in the middle of the field on a three plus. Or he can just knock this fool down and free himself for the future. In my, uh, in my opinion, I would go one-on-one -on -one right here, attempt to knock him down to free him up to hit him. Yes or no? One vote for yes, two votes for yes. One vote for no, the skink first. Two votes for no. The third vote from Lieutenant says middle. I guess middle is, uh, is gonna be this, okay. So you're going to go one-on-one -on -one with this guy and try to free this fool up. So that's a single die rolls. Here we go. You did it. Pow. A pow is going to put him in one of these three spots. One, two, three. I would put him here. Follow up. Try to break his armor. His armor is not broken. And now he's free. One... Let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, blitz. Uh, so that is um, two dice. It's a strength four versus strength two. Uh, you doubled his stats, so it's three dice. Shitty, shitty roll. You fucked up, you fucked up, or you got him unless he has bli uh, a dodge. And yes, he actually has dodge. So uh, you push him back into one of these three spaces and you follow up. Now, the good thing about corn is they have frenzy. What frenzy means is if you push him back and he's still not not down you get to go again he attacks him again so i wouldn't use your reroll. i would just do, uh, let him do his frenzy which is he attacks again oh okay that you might want to choose your reroll because it's the same result and it would just push him back again and then you would have to do stuff with other things do you want to use your one reroll? Two votes for reroll. Three votes for reroll. All right. Here goes your reroll. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, chat. Lady Luck does not like you. 
So pushback is the best result you're going to get. Or, I mean, you could choose both down. But then you wouldn't get to move with everybody else. I think you would. I think you want to try to move with everybody else, right? You're not that desperate to get the ball on the ground, are you? All right, because I mean he can knock his ass down next time, right? All right, so let's do the rest of it. All right, so here to here. This guy has a good chance. Uh, strength three versus a strength two. So two dice and you choose. Uh, you knocked him back, but he has dodge. Follow up. One on one here. It is a pushback, but he has frenzy, so he goes again. And it is a both down result. Uh oh. Turnover. Checking armor. Oh, my armor. Uh, you broke my armor. <gasps> Am I about to lose a lizardman? Injury roll. 10 on the injury roll. Casualty. The player becomes a casualty and is immediately removed from play and placed in the casualty box. The coach of the opposing team then rolls on the casualty to see if he fucking dies. And a six on the casualty table. He is badly hurt. This player misses the rest of the game but suffers no long-term effects. I'll never get him back. And that was one of my big boys. So you have definitely uh, worked out really nicely there because uh, big boys are definitely doing work. So, <clears throat> but it's a turnover. So it's turn three for me. So you see how important it is to make making decisions here. I said you might actually want to knock him down, right? Because I thought, well, the corn will easily be able to knock him down next time. But I forgot that my skink actually has really good agility. So it's like, I could just run up the middle. I could just run away from you. And I'm really fast. So I think I fucked you over there, chat. I, I probably, as the corn, I probably would have took the both down result to knock the ball out of his hand well no because the same thing would have happened right if it was both down i would have stood my skink up and i would have grabbed the ball and and continued running so no i'm wrong i'm wrong that's fine we're good all right so i'm gonna stand this guy up i'm gonna try to run through the middle of the field i'm gonna stand this guy up and um I'm going to dodge. I'm going to try to get leave and go. I'm going to try to go right here to go around you. So I need a three plus. Now, I'm wondering if I should do this now or later. I'm going to do this later. I'm going to take the risk because I see an opportunity. I'm going to have those two guys beat up on that dude. Uh, let's say five versus three. And he is knocked down. <clears throat> uh, oh, shit. Depending on which one, let's just make it, make it more fun. I, I, I was thinking this is the one I had in mind to knock him. So I just knocked your dude into the crowd. There was literally no no spaces he could go to. If he was knocked by this guy, then there was a space left that he could be knocked into. But I'm knocking him with this guy, which knocks him into the crowd. And then the crowd jumps on him and starts beating his ass. So when somebody gets knocked into the crowd like that, let's see. Injured by the crowd. Um, no armor roll is made against the player. Instead, the coach immediately rolls on the injury table. 
Oops. Wrong dice. Injury table. Six. Stunned. He is placed in the reserves box. He can come out next uh, next drive. He's over here. So he got beat up a little bit, but nothing too bad that he's he's worried about it. And uh, I will not follow up. That frees up this guy to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Touches uh, to touch your guy's booty. I'm touching your booty, Jack. Right there. Terms of service violation. Um, I'm going to get even more risky. And I'm going to go here to here. I'm going to roll two dice. My guy's stronger. Ooh, that was risky. Uh, knock back here. And I will follow up. And now the moment of truth. I'm going to dodge. I need a three plus. A one or a two, I fail. Fuck! Okay. I have one reroll left. Do I use it on this? I have one reroll this half left. That's for touching the booty. Yeah. That's for touching the booty. I'm going to reroll it with my last reroll. Oh! No! Chat! You motherfuckers! Boosh! He knocks his ass out before he gets away. And we are going to scatter this dice, you lucky pieces of shit. It's a turnover, ladies and gentlemen. My God, is chat going to get a touchdown? Are they going to be able to capitalize off this? The ball lands there. And it's anybody, and it's an, an immediate turnover, meaning chat goes first. Oh my God. Two big guys who are shitty at picking up the ball are down the field. Um, let's assess the situation, chat, as you go into turn four. You want to make sure that you capitalize off this. Um, this guy's better at picking up the ball, but he's in this guy's tackle zone. He would have to make an agility test, and then he would agility test through this guy as well. That's two agility tests to try to break through there. That's no bueno. You can stand these guys up. Blitz with one to knock this fool down. Another thing you can do is agility test with this guy to break him away and have him come there. Uh, so, or you could block that guy, try to knock him down. Or you could try to go pick up the ball, which is not advisable because his agility is... Actually, his ability, agility is not that bad. It's four. Um, but then you're going to have to pick up the ball with another four. And then you can score. If you can get two fours in a row, you can score. So, I'm going to leave it up to you. Uh, let's make this decision first. Do you want to go for the ball? Or do you want to knock out the Lizardmen? Going for the ball would require a four, and then a four, and then you can score. Knocking out the Lizardmen would be a single die roll, and you would have to accept the result. And you are out of re-rolls. So, uh, vote now. Either 
go for the ball or so uh, or hmm ball or block one vote for ball One vote for block, two votes for ball, three votes for ball, four votes for ball, three votes for block, five votes for ball, six, seven, eight. You guys are going for the ball. You're going super risky, huh? All right, first thing you need to do is get out of there with a four plus. Then you can come here, four plus, and score a touchdown. So four plus, this was probably not the thing to do. You probably wanted to get the rest of your team involved, uh, but it was the decision made. So here you go. If you get a four plus, I'll 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 shut my mouth. Oh! <laughs> and that's why you didn't want to do that. <laughs> you guy falls down. He's not very graceful, ladies and gentlemen. Those big boys are not graceful. But he's not hurt, and it is an immediate turnover. And you failed to realize, Chad, that that was a huge mistake because I've got Lizardman blockers here. I've got Lizardman blockers here. I've got the middle of the field, and guess what? My motherfucker stands up very easily. Now, standing up, I think, is negative three. Uh, to my movement of eight. So I can move five spaces with that guy. One. But I got to pick up the ball. Picking up the ball is agility. I need a three plus to pick up the ball. So I could eat up, eat my own words here. I've moved one of my five spaces. Please do not roll a two or a one. Oh my God, I'm getting nervous. I failed. <laughs> All right, so that's a turnover. But when when you fumble the ball like that, what happens? I think it, do you use a scatter. Um, when you fail to pick up a ball, picking up the ball. Fumble pass. Uh, handoff, fumbled throws, um, I don't know what, picking up the ball, alright, if they pick up the ball and they fail, the ball will bounce. Page 25, we're doing a bounce. A bounce is the D8 and then into a square. So it's just, just a D8, okay? Fuck, lucky motherfuckers, I could've fucking. Oh, you were so lucky. Three, that is right here. I believe that's a turnover. Okay. It is your turn, chat. That was my turn four. You're going into turn five of eight. You desperately, desperately need to score here. Uh, it's getting, getting late hour. What would you like to do? You want to get your crew on the feet? That sounds like a good idea. The last level. Does anybody want to concur on with that? We need our men's. Stand up, y'all. 
pick up our crew. All right. This guy's standing. This guy's standing. Would you like to blitz with him? One of them stood. One can blitz. You'd have uh, a plus one from this guy to this guy. So that's two dice to blitz to knock him down. Or should you save that? Stand, stand up this guy. Blitz. Do you want to blitz here? Okay, so let's do let's do the decision over here first. Do you want to blitz over here? Yes or no? Oops. One vote for yes, one vote for no. Deciding to blitz over here or not. Two votes for no. Three votes for no. So we will not blitz there. We will just stand. All right. So we got those two. Uh, what about... Um, hmm. What about over here? This guy. Do you want him to use his agility to leave and come this way? To help with the ball, so this guy's better at picking up the ball than a blood seeker. Or do you want him to uh, block the skink? So this turn is definitely filled with a lot of difficult decisions. Leave and go for the ball. One vote for leave and go for the ball. One for block, two for agility, two for leaving over the ball, three for leaving, le okay, three for leaving go on the ball, okay. So this guy has a good agility. His agility is three plus. He'll go right here to leave and try to attempt to come this way. That is, happens on a three. Six, you got it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you want to rush for two more squares or are you okay? Rush or no rush? Remember, rushing allows you to move two additional squares, but if you roll a one, then you fall down. One vote rush, two votes no rush. Two to two. Douse Vasher was the tiebreaker on rushing. So moving one more for uh, hopefully you don't roll a one. You did not roll a one. Do you want to rush one more time? You can get adjacent to the. Um, you can get adjacent to the lizard men, which would help him when he stands up, and they both take that guy on. No rush. No rush. We rush this far. Rush. Two to two. Clone, thank you for subscribing for so long, my friend. And that's three votes for Rush. There goes Batman tiebreaker here. So as long as you don't roll a one, you're fine. Ooh. Close, but you're good. Rush. Okay. So... That was a that was a it's a great decision, and the fact that you didn't blitz earlier means that this guy can stand and blitz. Um, or 
Yeah. Do you, would you like to stand and blitz? Or did you all already blitz? I don't think you blitz. So blitz or ball. Now blitzing would stand him up. He would get a plus one to hit him. Uh, going for the ball, he would have to roll a four, and then he would have to roll a five to pick this ball up. So he would need a four and then a five. Blitz. One vote for blitz. Two vote for blitz. Three vote for blitz. Four vote for blitz. Five blitz. All right. You're going to knock this guy down. That's going to get you two dice. Choose the result. Both down or push back. You're going to want to push back because you have frenzy, which uh, will allow you to follow up. And because of your frenzy, you get to um, automatically do it again. Pow! You knocked him down. Good job, chat. He has to follow up because, again, he has frenzy. And you're going to try to break his armor. Armor not broken. Okay, that was a good... Good, good, good. Let's come over here. Let's see what you want to do over here. So... You can uh, block here for three dice. Pow. Follow, follow up. And breaking his armor, armor not broken. Um. That frees up this guy. What I would do is I would take this guy, move him here, ties up him. Now that this guy's free, one, two, three, ties him up and allows them to go 2v1. Agreed? Agreed. All right, we've got these three guys left. Um, I think this guy's here, so... Uh, armor four versus strength two. That is three dice for y'all. Pow! Has to follow up. Hurting him. Just barely missed hurting him. Uh, right here, that's a one on one, four versus four. Pow! Nice. Hurting him. No, no damage. Hold on, chat. I got a call. All right, uh, we got uh, one more uh, case here, right here. Uh, this is a negative to y'all. You would be rolling two dice, and I would be choosing. Do you want to do it, yes or no? Otherwise, your turn is over, because you're... 
on with everybody. One vote for no, two vote for no, three vote for no. All right, it is my turn, turn five. Okay, so what you actually did here, chat, was very uh, a very good turn. Uh, a lot of, you're getting some control over here now. You're getting some advantages now. We got two on one, we got two on one. You're doing great. Uh, the only problem is you left this free and you really, you know, you really didn't want to do that because the skinks are so fucking fast. So I could go one, pick up the ball, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I can throw it to my other skink. He gets the ball, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10 if I push it, and I'm all the way almost scoring. <laughs> Is that not fucking crazy? Let's fucking go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's where I would end up. Let's try to pick up the ball. All I need is a 3 plus, but I do not have any re-rolls. Hey! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, um, what's going to be easier? I can actually hand off the ball. If I go one, two. If I don't roll one tw uh, twice, I can hand off the ball. I think that might be easier. Otherwise, throwing the ball with a skink is a four plus. But simply handing the ball off, a handoff is not a pass action. There is no test required to perform the action itself. And even a player with a PA may hold, perform a handoff. The player performing the action simply needs to be in possession of the ball. The player receiving the ball must test their agility to catch it. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. So I just have to not roll a one. Okay. I have to not roll a one again. Okay. I'm going to hand off the ball to this guy. He has to catch it on a three plus. He's gone, ladies and gentlemen, Angry Joe's Lizards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. If this guy comes screaming to blitz me, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got to push it. Let's push it twice. One, two, hey, I <laughs> got you, chat, motherfucker. All right, I'm going to stand this guy up back here. I'm going to stand this guy up in an instant. Your dreams are shattered. This guy versus this guy. Pow! And I'm not going to follow up, but I am going to crush his armor. Oh. Fuck. No, his armor's fine. I will follow up. All right. That's my turn. Uh, chat, it is now your turn to do everything in your power to try to stop that guy. First things first. This guy is free. One, two, three, four, five. You probably don't want to blitz yet because you could blitz with this guy. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just barely make it and you can blitz him. So blitz with this guy. First things first, though, you're going to need to double up on this fool. Uh, so that is two dice to you. Uh, he's attacking him with a plus one from him. So let's see if you do it. I rolled the wrong dice. You did it. He has frenzy, which means, uh-oh, the frenzy's going to get you in trouble, guys. He has to hit him again, no matter what. You're out of re-rolls. So if you fuck up this roll, then it's over. You won't even get to this guy blitzing him. So here we go. All right, you didn't fuck up the roll. Okay, now you can blitz. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna need two rolls, two successful rolls in a roll to get there. Don't roll a one. And he's going to not roll one more time. Oh! Boom! Boom! He can't get there, ladies and gentlemen. Immediate turnover. Angry Joe's lizards. Touchdown! Touchdown! I got you, motherfuckers. <laughs> you suck, chat. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. I hope you had fun. I got to go. We got to go and eat. It's all right there. <laughs> I actually had a lot of fun, chat. Even though, you know, it's, it's you're not in complete control. What do you think of uh, this little test? was awesome cool well I am glad you enjoyed that's it then test successful maybe so maybe in the future uh, chat can have their own team and we can run a league you guys can go against me Joe Alex Ray etc all right guys so all right y'all have a good night I'll see you on the next angry Joe show bye guys